Hello there, this is something else that you'll find in my house. Uh, this is a lunch menu for a Concorde flight. For those of you who don't know what the Concorde is, uh, the Concorde is, um, well, really the only uh, supersonic jet airliner there ever was. I mean, the Russians will argue with you with that because they had their own sort of imitation Concorde called the Tupolev 144 which didn't work very well at short range and was deafeningly loud uh, but the Concorde was the first uh, supersonic and to this date the only uh, supersonic jet airliner that had regular flight service had a top speed of about Mach 2 and uh, it was just an amazing plane that uh, you know I always wish that I could have flown in <clears throat> I only ever knew one person that flew in a Concorde and that is when I was uh, younger I lived in New York City uh, doing the starving artist thing and I worked for a photographer by the name of Albert Watson and he was one of the top fashion photographers in the world at the time <clears throat> and uh, I worked at his studio in the West Village uh, but uh, and only part-time and of course Albert was going all over the world and uh, you know photographing supermodels and so on and so forth and uh, he was even the wedding photographer for the wedding of Prince Charles and Princess Diana, if uh, uh, if that interests you as well. But uh, anyway, one day I'm at the studio, and uh, it was a Saturday morning, and I uh, get a phone call, and it's Albert, and he's calling from Milan. And he says, uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm in Milan right now. I'm catching a flight to Paris, and then I'm taking the Concorde back to New York. And so that was about maybe 10 in the morning. And so at about 5 o'clock in the evening, uh, the bell rings, um, for the studio and there's Albert he arrived uh, at the studio uh, with his luggage and uh, and basically uh, it took him seven hours to fly from Milan to Paris to New York and then take a cab from JFK to his studio so seven hours in all, usually a flight just from Paris to New York is at least eight hours. So this flight was um, basically probably half the time it would ordinarily take you to, to fly. So, I mean, that's uh, pretty insane. Uh, but anyway... Um, how did I get this uh, menu here? Well, uh, there's a bookstore downtown where I live where um, they sell used and new books. And uh, out front of the store, they'll often have this box of books that they don't really want or need. And they just uh, give the, uh, uh, the books away, you know, just free books. So... I was rummaging through that uh, box one evening and I found a book and then I opened the book and then this menu was inside there. Uh, so uh, I ended up not getting the book but I kept the menu. So let's go ahead and take a look at this menu here, okay? First of all, let's take a look at the uh, front here. You'll see, of course, a photo of the uh, Concorde itself. This is a one flown by British Airways. The only other 
operator of the Concorde was Air France. Uh, taking a look at the back here, you'll see that there's a little certificate on the back here. It says, by traveling on British Airways Concorde, blank, has joined the select group who have traveled at Mach 2 in the world's first supersonic passenger aircraft. Kind of nifty there, huh? Okay, uh, you look inside here, and it gives you a little bit of a a history of the Concorde. First of all, it flew first in nine, December of 1969, but it didn't start commercial service until 1976. Um, so, it says here, since its inaugural flight in 1976, more than three quarters of a million passengers have flown in the Concorde. And it says almost seven years of commercial flying have been completed. So this menu is from 1983. Okay, and, uh, and so there's a little bit more if you want to look at that. Um, so... Kind of a neat little uh, synopsis there of the uh, Concorde. You'll see that this is a flight that flew from London to Washington. So this is when they had flights from Heathrow to Dulles. And uh, notice the flight time of four hours and five minutes. And so that is uh, substantial time savings over what it would normally take you to fly from London to Washington. Um, but here is uh, some more information about the Concorde. How will you know when supersonic seat speed is achieved? Well, basically, you, it was hard to tell that you broke the speed of sound, if, as I recall. Um, the only thing you way you would know is uh, there's a digital display in the cabin that would tell you when you got over Mach 1. Okay, and uh, and so uh, there you go. And here's some facts and figures about the Concorde, 204 feet long, which, by the way, is the length of the plane on the ground. But as it got to altitude and high speed... The plane heated up due to friction with the Earth's atmosphere, and it grew in length by like a foot, if not more, uh, at high speed. Um, as uh, let's see here, uh, four turbojet engines, which is why this plane stopped service after a while, because turbojet engines are not very efficient compared to modern turbo fan engines and they just suck up fuel like crazy. It cost something like $10,000 to fly from London to the United States in one of these on, on a flight. So it just wasn't worth, uh, you know, flying because uh, it was just so incredibly expensive. Notice that it has a cruising altitude of 55,000 to 60,000 feet, which is about five miles higher than your average uh, commercial jetliner. So that's kind of neat. And also the plane fits only a hundred. I've actually been inside a Concorde that's uh, on display at the Museum of Flight in Seattle and these planes are pretty tight. There's only two seats on each side of the aisle and uh, my head, and I'm a little over six feet tall, uh, I can't recall if I, my head was scraping the ceiling or if I had to duck to stand up in the aisle there. So it's tight. So anyway, um, this is a menu, so let's go ahead and take a look at what you get for your four-hour flight for $10,000, okay? <clears throat> of course, here's your choice of beverages in terms of uh, alcoholic beverages. Um, you've got uh, um, your wines there, if you're a 
wine connoisseur, you may know about these uh, wines, and if they're quality wines, presumably they are, and you've got two wines and one champagne there. You've got uh, various liqueurs and a port. You have a cigar. <laughs> you can you could smoke on the plane back then. Just think about that. And then, um, let's see, you had uh, canapes made of crayfish pate or smoked salmon. And then here's lunch. You had caviar on toast. You have, um, in terms of the main menu, um, prime filet of larded beef, roasted to perfection and served with cream green pepper sauce. Now I've had steak with green, cream green pepper sauce, and that's really good stuff. Uh, and of course, you also have a choice of fish, filet of turbo, poached with white wine, saffron, and shallots. And then you have a salad there as well, your Belgian endive and radicchio salad with a leeks and a vinaigrette dressing. And then you have a selection of French and English cheeses. And for dessert, you have pineapple and figs in brandy and passion fruit syrup on a base of macaroon. And then, of course, you have coffee and decaffeinated coffee served with whatever of uh, friandise and homemade chocolates. So you've got a short flight, but you are eating well. So uh, anyway, that is it for uh, this menu. And just to let you know how much I like the Concorde, uh, I also have this chrome model of the Concorde that I got a few years back. I have a couple of more souvenirs of the Concorde as well that uh, were actually given to me by my parents. Uh, they all worked at the uh, city library here and, uh, you know, people donate books and so on and so forth to the library and uh, so they gave me something that was donated but not needed by the library which was a small oh about three by three inch little cardboard box and inside that box were three is that a three or four English translation dictionaries uh, French, German, and Italian, and maybe even Spanish. I can't recall, but I have those as well. So, who knows? Maybe I'll uh, collect some more Concord souvenirs since I'm such a big fan of the Concord. I'd love to get a uh, a safety card or something like that, you know, the thing that shows you how to evacuate the plane and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this look. Add something else that's in my house and have yourself a great day.